All right, this video is a little bit late, but uh, about a month ago marked two years since I bought the truck, and it's been a good two years. I've had a lot of fun working on here, and the channel's been growing. Uh, we just crossed uh, 7,700 subs, which I'm pretty excited about. It's fun to watch that grow and see more people come on board and be interested in the project here. So I thought it would be fun to go over everything that I've done to the truck in the past two years. So I'll just back up here, try to get a better shot of the truck. It's just hooked on this flatbed now just to have a truck under it. I have not ran this thing very much. Uh, I've pulled one load of beans with it since I bought it. Other than that, it really hasn't worked. Just drove it around a little bit. Uh, this fall it should get a little more work for it which that'll be nice now with harvest going on and then maybe i'll be able to make some videos of driving it loaded and get a little more practice driving it i'm still not by any means an expert on how to drive a twin stick that's uh something i'm looking forward to doing getting more practice on there and get some videos of it actually loaded so i can show it working but what we've done to the truck in the past two years see if i can remember everything uh, if you can remember when i bought it for those who were following me back then it used to be on black steel rims so we've got new rims on the front here i put these white mud flaps on got the old swing and plate hanger added the bumper lights repainted this fender because the old green paint was showing through really bad on this side as you can see on this fender you can see the old green that it used to be now that paint is a terror to work with as I learned working on this fender it was very bad to, to repaint over it fought the other paint and bubbled it up pretty bad so I took everything off of that fender in order to repaint it to have a good job and it's also been about a year since I polished it so it's starting to look a little bit faded there I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with all these steel rivets I'm not sure if you can replace them with something else or maybe just put in new steel ones that are um, plated chrome. But that doesn't look too good anymore with the, the rust on them. Actually, this part of the polish is, or part of the aluminum is actually still in good shape. I still have not fixed my covers here. Uh, I imagine what I'll end up doing is getting someone to make a new aluminum plate and I will just paint it up. Again this is going to have to get welded so I need someone who's good with aluminum welding to redo that and then this will get riveted on. It should actually be a fairly simple job. I also put on a set of pipes here I have a little muffler underneath, but from the Y pipe on, it's straight through with the uh, miters. It's sitting at about 13.3, I think. And it sounds pretty good now with the small muffler in it. It's got a lot more bark than it used to have. I added these signals down here, took off the old black plastic lights that used to be on here. Also got a set of shiny lights for the backup lights there. These are actually old breather panels we had lying around. It's not a very popular style anymore to have the two oval lights in a breather panel, but actually they fit on here really well. I did have a panel on here to hide all of this, but I need to find a better way of mounting it. I had just put uh, double-sided tape on here but it did not work that well. It was starting to come loose again. 
So I imagine I'll have to find a way to mount it on with screws. And the frame paint was a pretty big job. I was glad when that was done. It wasn't that hard, especially when you've got a truck with 260 inch wheelbase. There's, if I go zoom out here, there's an awful lot of room between the bunk and the rest of the truck. Got a set of stainless fenders. They're used, they're not in great shape, but they were sitting around and this was a good place for them. It's a lot better than the old white plastic ones that were on here. Eight new drives. These old rims were lying around the shop, so I used them. Again, these used to be steel. There's still steel on the inside, but in order to replace that, I would have to put new studs in the hubs. So I just let that be, figured that's good enough for now, and I didn't have four more rims anyway. New mud flap hangers instead of the black steel spring ones, and a set of nice mud flaps on there. I still have to replace a lot of these lines. Well, have to is the wrong word. They're not in bad shape. I would just like to get some of them redone. And a new set of airlines here. They're starting to get a little bit tired in the electrical line up in the uh, clamp system in here. Some of this stuff is just kind of ugly, but it works. New shocks on the back end. We also replaced the floor and the carpet, dyed this carpet brown. The dye hasn't stuck that well. Uh, maybe someday I'll get some actual brown carpet and put it in, but right where your feet go, it just keeps coming out. A lot of cleaning up in the dash, a lot of wiring redone, switch extensions, shift knobs. All four mirrors have been replaced. And the radio, the CB, and a lot of the foam behind this interior I replaced because the mice had gotten into that. There still haven't been any mice in here since I bought it. Uh, I saw one running around, but there's actually not been any, any new mice moving in, no new nests, no new damage. As far as the visible damage from mice in the truck, it is uh, the spot there and the spot there. And one spot on the back side of this, right in here, where they had gotten in. But for having the amount of mice in here that I did find, it's in very good shape. A new rubber for the bunk in here. Still has the original seats that I got it with. Uh, the driver's seat's an old Eldorado seat. I would love to find a, another brown air ride Eldorado, but that's pretty much impossible. It's sad that everyone was throwing them away years ago, and now they're pretty much impossible to find. When I bought it, the jakes weren't working. I got those fixed, and they run quite well now. And I replaced both thermostats and the engines, so now... Instead of running up to 200 degrees, and even with the engine fan on, I could hardly get it to come down from 200. Now it sits at about 170 all day long. And that's a relief to me because this truck is turned up. And I wanted to make sure it stayed cool. So we'll see what happens when it gets working harder. But as far as just running down the road, it doesn't, doesn't heat up like it used to. And even... Sitting in the yard, it would uh, run up to about 160, 170. Just if I idled it, it would just climb like crazy. So when I tested my thermostats, which were 180 degree thermostats, they uh, didn't open until 195. So that kind of explained why I was having some issues there. Added in the little anti-glare lights here. They're kind of cute. I always liked how that looked. And it is... Uh, the correct era to have those kind of lights back in 78. Everything I've done to the truck, I've tried to keep um, 
keep it looking like a truck you would find running in the 70s. So people say, oh, put, put your 8-inch pipes on, put your drop visor on. No, I'm not doing that. I, I want to keep it looking like an old truck. As far as plans for the future, I still have my 29 inch stubby tanks to put under the bunk when I do come across a set of battery boxes and then I'll repaint the frame in there. I will be putting new steers on sometime. These are, these are okay. They're getting a little bit old and for the amount that uh, a new set of steers would cost, I could throw them on pretty easily and that's just peace of mind. I don't screw around with bad steers. There's no point in taking a risk and wrecking the truck just because I was trying to be cheap on a set of tires. I'm going to take the floor out again someday when I find the, uh, the drive to do that and rebuild the linkage to the front transmission. There's a bit too much slop in there. It should be nice and tight and I've seen videos of guys running these 6 and 4s uh, when the Linkages are tight, and it just showed me how sloppy mine really is. It doesn't get stuck in gear anymore since I rebuilt the four-speed tower. So that's good. So it's not like there's a mechanical risk with it. It's just uh, you want a good, good feel for the gears, especially with this transmission setup when you are uh, doing so much floating. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for a giveaway here. Uh, when I hit 75 that I would do a giveaway for that. I still have to think about what that's going to be. I have a few ideas. I do have t-shirts, but I just kind of made them for fun. I'm not really pushing them. It's, I, I would like to get some nicer ones done up. Maybe a, a nice drawing of the truck or something like that and put it on a t-shirt. Instead of just having my logo or something like that. But we'll see. Anyway, this is how it looks after the two years I've had it. Should put new clearance lights on too. They're starting to peel. I like the old Grover covers on the air horns. But for some reason they look like they might be different sizes. I'm not sure I'm going to have to go up and measure that. So, thanks for watching, thanks for your support, thanks for subscribing, I really appreciate it, and I do have some exciting stuff coming up, I haven't started videoing that, and I haven't uploaded any, fit, any footage of that, but pretty soon here we should be getting started on something else that I'm pretty excited about, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.